The Lost in Transition podcast is brought to you by LB Endurance. LB Endurance, turning you into a legit badass. Learn more today at lbendurance.com. They turned you into a legit badass, didn't she? I hope so. Rumor has it. Hey, if you go 140.6 miles, I think that's legit badass territory. I'd give it that. I'm still alive after the 140.6. We'll talk about that here in just a bit. Um, Yeah, still alive. Still kicking, barely. Uh, What, 12 days after now as we're recording this? I noticed uh, you actually walked up the stairs, and that was... Oh, yeah, no, yeah, I was doing was stairs right. within three days. Yeah. We'll talk about recovery. Within three days. <laughs> yeah. Three days right. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we, we made that pretty pretty decent yes. recovery. So if you haven't guessed, our listeners here, listen, this is what we're going to do today. Yes. We're actually talking to our host, Chris Gerard, uh-huh. and his lovely wife. Jen Gerard. Who, who may say hi if we ask her nicely. Yes. She's a little microphone no, shy. Not. I know. She's <laughs> totally going to throw things at us, but that's okay. We'll get her here. But these two just completed the Michigan Titanium full distance, 140.6 miles. On the same day. On the same day. At the same time. At the same time. For the first time. Well, not For at the, the same first time. time like one after their the first other. Yeah. full. We have in the room two. In exactly the same time. Badasses. Well, yep. I don't know. I think someone's time was one second faster. Oh, it showed as a tie in the final results. We'll hash that uh, out here in a I few minutes, too. I think the misses is definitely first. Okay. All right. Well, it doesn't matter. The misses is matter. always first. Exactly. Happy wife, happy, happy life. Wife, yes. It, it, Come on, Chris. All right. So, Derek, it, you're gonna have to take him aside and I explain know. this to him. We're gonna have to have a talk. Oh, We're gonna have Lord. to have an intervention. <laughs> that talk now. Let's have that talk. Yes. As oh. you can tell, we're old pros at this. Getting back to podcasting after a month. So, if you're impressed with us so far, subscribe, Just wait. rate, review. Go to iTunes. Don't leave yet. Don't leave quite yet. Wait till the end of the show to make your rating, and then we'll probably fully deserve the one star rating at that point. Yes. Uh, we do thank you for listening there, and follow us Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, which is brand new and more and more people are following instagram. us on instagram everybody loves and instagram. we're putting up pathetically little stuff there so we need to like do more with clearly that. we need yeah. to have more pictures of sam and callie because yeah the cats, cats the, cat, the cats of instagram there are cats. cats of the podcast cats podcast. of the podcast yes yeah. truthfully i mean what pictures do you put up for a podcast other than selfies of people we podcast and interview that's true I mean, that's kind of like the that whole is kind of the bread purpose. and butter yeah i mean we could see t- pictures of microphones and we could take a yeah. picture of the cat sitting clothes. outside the door, like waiting to come in. Yeah, yeah. We and could. and so the the studio cats are going to be screaming tonight because normally Jen is the one that sits with them ah. and keeps them at bay. Excellent. We and could interview the studio cats. I know they would be loud enough to get on <laughs> mic. We'll see if you hear the studio cats. We will uh, cover that in a little bit. All right. Now they All have right, to be so on Instagram. Now, yeah. Now <laughs> All they right, have to I'm be expecting on. this right. now. Okay. All right. We'll get a picture of that up. So yeah, this one forty point six that we're. Uh, Bouncing back from, I guess, I guess we get to be uh, talked to and mm-hmm. answer questions. Yep, and Derek whole, and I are going to ask bit. the questions. Yeah, yes. I know. I'm unused to this format, but yeah. I, will, so, I will adjust. Yes. Well, so here we are. We're we're in the room here with two triathletes who've just done um, this full distance thing. So let's kick it back to the beginning, though. Let's let's, let's, let's the very way back. Let's go back. Let's go back. Way so, back. so if you would share with us, share with our listeners. Where did you guys start out? What what was your athletic history, and how did you end up in triathlon? I want to hear this from Jen. <laughs> yes. And you're on the spot. Yes. Jen Gerard, step right back? up. Do you want me to go? Hey, as far back as you're comfortable, so. Mm. Tell the listeners. Hmm. So I've been a runner since middle school. I did cross-country okay. and track, and... Um, and then ran through college, didn't compete on a team or anything, just ran and have been a runner up until we started triathlon like seven years ago. Okay. Fantastic. Why did why did you get into triathlon? What was what was the impetus? I got bored with running. All right, that's valid. <laughs> I like okay. it. Okay. Cool. Cool. Seems legit. All right. Did you play any other sports? Or are you pretty much a runner? I ride horses. Okay. Well yes, of course. Yes. Mm-hmm. And you still do that today? I do. Yes. All right. Yeah, the triathlon was her idea, not mine. The very first one that we did. Uh, so it took I, I still a lot of convincing. A lot of convincing. I was not going to do that first one. Really? Manchester Sprint Triathlon I, I got, in Tennessee. I got 
you should never lead with this is her fault. <laughs> oh no, I'm... that was a not a good way to lead into <laughs> this. The subtitle of today's podcast is how to be a better husband. Oh you, geez, yeah, yeah. give me a hard like, time. See, a hey, this is wife, cross promotion. Right? We could now put ourselves in like the relationship podcast. Oh, there we will get some oh, ourselves. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. be like full on self help. Wow. A good triathlete and a good, <laughs> and a good spouse. Oh, boy. Oh, my goodness. Uh, anyway, so, carry on. Okay. Yes. Yeah. All right. Manchester Sprint. Without yeah. blaming your wife, how did you get into triathlon? <laughs> <laughs> it was her great idea. There you go. Inspiration. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't want to do it. I, 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 I was a total on, adult onset swimmer, dog paddle, no face in the water. So was nothing. it just the swimming that you were like, I can't swim, so this yeah, is the stupid? Swimming, yeah, because I, I was a okay. big cyclist, uh, you know, all through... The pre Chris having a car phase of my life. Okay. Uh, you know, biked, uh, I think I've made it up over 2,000 miles a year a couple times, which, you know, on a mountain or hybrid bike, uh, that's you know, a lot. It's, it's plenty for a, you know, that, that's 13, like, 14 That's like 14,000 road miles. You know, yeah. mo most yeah. people. Yeah. Most people that have listened have been commenting on the mountain bike story lately, so we won't rehash that here, you know, but... <laughs> but go back and find it and listen to right, it, because yeah. it's really good. 108 miles on a mountain bike, so go back in the archive a few episodes and you'll find the mountain bike story. Um, you know, kind of gave up cycling by the time, especially I got to college, didn't even bring my bike, didn't have it down here in Tennessee for the first couple of years, and uh, got got the hybrid bike back at that point. And uh, I remember, you know, despite having ridden metrics and full centuries in my teen years, I remember going downtown Knoxville from the west side of town. So about a 25 mile, uh, 25 mile round trip mm -hmm. on July 4th. The one day I figured it's a holiday. I can take as long as I need. Yeah. You know, it was kind of one of those, gosh, this is going to take a while. And, you know, it wasn't that bad, but it was still i remember that stuck out in my head as a oh wow this is i'm actually doing this again Ooh. and um running was something that once again is it was upon the inspiration and and guidance of my lovely wife I, I had run a little bit early in college um i'd been part of an air force rtc program for about a year and a half They'll make your um, own, yeah. and, and they, yeah. they made us yeah. run a fair amount um but you know after that i was totally willing to put it on the shelf and would mm -hmm. go out running with her occasionally and, uh, you know, just be totally winded. And I don't even know what our pace was at that point, probably much lower than either of us run now. And just, you know, I, I doubt yeah. we ever did more than maybe three, four miles at the most. Okay. So um, kept running, you know, after college, but just very sporadically sure. and never more than a few miles did a 5k. And then, one day I went out and I ran five miles, just kind of on a whim. It was one of those things where I had time and it felt good. There's a pattern like, with you. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And so so this isn't quite as good as the mountain bike story, <laughs> but I ended up in Nashville, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it still speaks to that same complete joyful uh, ignorance is bliss sort of thing. So I started running three times a week after doing that five, because I'm like, I, you know, with a little run walking, I survived it. And so, uh, Did you do it with like your pocket stuff full of water bottles? No, or but you know, but still cotton cotton shirt and you know <laughs> non running shorts and you know just personal Khakis, right? Uh, Denim? Oh no, goodness. jeans, work boots. They were know. mesh shorts. Cut off shorts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so I start running. Here, here's here's how it ramps up. I start running five 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 miles in a week. Okay, right. that's a little ambitious for somebody starting, but okay. Right. Six, 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 seven, seven. It eventually made it up to 12, 12, 12, which is a lot more than I run right now unless I'm in a focus. Uh, yeah. And then I ran my first half marathon, which was not sanctioned and not even smart because it was in July. And I just measured out a course and ran it. And I think it was like a buck 52 or something like that. And it was absolutely miserable. And I came home and I drank a bunch of pickle juice and... And then here's the really stupid part. I knew that I should step back a little bit since newbies in poor running shoes and whatever should not be running nearly 40 miles a week. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to step it back. I'm going to go back to 11, 11, 11. Hmm. Yeah, back and it off just a little bit. Just a little bit, you know, right? And I wanted to keep the fitness I had gained. And I made it about a mile and a half into that first 11. And there went the Achilles. Yeah. And here came my lovely wife to pick me up and that was all the running i did for the next six months or so goodness gracious yeah there's wow. a pattern, there's a pattern here mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so so jen how did you get started swimming were you had you swum before this triathlon like how did you get yourself into swimming shape for this first one 
Do you even remember, or was it just like, I'm going to just get across this? I think it was swimming laps in our pool at the apartment. Okay. So I've swam all my life. I know how to swim, and I'm pretty sure we just swam laps in the apartment pool. Okay. I don't even remember how long it was. Yeah, I don't think we ever went to a legit pool. We uh-uh. didn't have a gym membership at the time Damn. or anything. Yeah. That's pretty so. hardcore. It so is. yeah, no lane lines yeah. or anything like that. Six and... strokes turn, six mm-hmm. strokes turn. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. That would have worked out great for me when I started swimming because that's yeah, like yeah. all I could swim. Yeah, before. No, that's, no, that's exactly yeah. where like I was. Six strokes and I'm like, okay. yeah. Yeah, all I got right. to where I would come, you know, go make a full lap, and I was like, yeah, that's really good. Yeah. Nice. All right. So I heard you guys have been at this for like seven years. You're doing triathlons. So finally a full. Wh- why? Yeah, why really, on why? earth would you do something <laughs> after you heard us do something stupid? Why on earth a full? Like why? What? Who? Whose idea was it? By the way, probably mine. Okay. Yeah, okay. Or at I least I that. wanted to do it more than he did. Yes. Okay. All right. So I have, I have to say why. though that it, yeah. at some level I'm kind of shocked that Chris just didn't decide one day. One day he was just going to go out and do map it out and do it. Uh, 145 just to say he did mm. with like jean shorts and a backpack full of water bottles yeah yeah and swim at the end swim at the end yeah, yeah. okay all right so so what what was your uh motivation to do a full it was it just like you'd built up and you're like yeah it was just the next next race distance to do okay all right yeah literally i'm the same total total out of obligation and no sense of personal inspiration and peer pressure and just because everybody else was doing it um i, I wish i had more pure motives i guess moving into that but it really was just something where it was i can't especially now six year i think this is actually we'll be beginning our seventh year our first uh try was actually on labor day weekend here so we're talking almost exactly at the six year mark now gotcha um so entering our seventh year and you know i felt like i could not have possibly come that far and done reasonably well at some 70.3s and just not do it at that point so there's definitely probably a it's, level of curiosity. Yeah. 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 No, you, yep. That's a fair statement. I mean, mm-hmm. it really is. I think that natural progression from yeah. from sprint to Olympic to half to full, I mean, it, it, it's some people's thing. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. some people really like to do that sure. distance. And there's some people I don't know who why. probably will never will either. You know, right. they're like, it's just not my jam. But, but. Yeah. I mean, just like you said, it's... There's Finding a... out, maybe you are one of those people and you just didn't know it mm-hmm. until, but how would you know until you do it? That's true. That's true. It feels, so. it, it feels incomplete almost. And that's not to, I mean, I know some really good triathletes that have never Yeah, it's not full. to belittle anyone right, who doesn't absolutely do the not. But for, yeah. but for me, as somebody who is not going to be elite by any stretch of the word, certain days maybe toward the top end of a small age group, maybe, but never, you know, so... Because I don't have that chasing overall podiums as a goal, I'm my only other goal is to well, can I go further in distance really? Sure. And it's kind of I mm-hmm. would had I had I given up triathlon without doing a full, I would have felt like it was not you know like I hadn't taken it as far as it could be taken. So then again, there's a deck of you know I could do the ten in a row. So there's always a next level. I was gonna say there's <laughs> if, uh, there's a, there's always a next level. Yeah. Or there, or there's that crazy endurance. That, is it? It's on Hawaii. I don't remember the name of it, but it's oh, the Ultraman. It, Ultraman. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But basically, it's three and one. Yeah. Yeah. There's definitely all manners of taking it to another level, or something just really extreme like Norseman. Oh, you know, gosh. or you know, yeah. You know, I really wouldn't mind to do like Norseman or like you know Celtic Man or whatever. The I mean, they look gorgeous. Yeah. But I am such a pansy in cold water. <laughs> I, I, I can't it really. I just, yeah, um, you got to you got to the morning to do that. You just got to be able to shelf that. I mean, I could ride yeah. in the cold, I could run in the cold. I'd bitch, but I'd do it. But god, the swim in like 40 degree water, just f <laughs> that. <laughs> f that right now. Cold. <laughs> just... All right. So the race you guys did, Michigan Titanium, um up in Grand Rapids. Uh why why Michigan Titanium? Uh so I, I started looking around for fulls to do once I figured out that, I mean, she was going to do it. So, you know, I, at least I, you know, and, and you can suffer together, suffer together. And so we may as well do it together. And, and Michigan was actually just perfect in so many ways. 
because you cannot beat their early registration price well under half of, of an Iron Man registration. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's a pretty big event, too. I think, what, maybe a thousand participants about across six, all the distances? About 600, I think, yeah. the past few years. Because they do, they've got the half, the full, the aqua bike, tw- the duathlon. They have 12 different races over three distances. Wow. Yeah. yeah. You know, looking into it, it was one of those things where we figured out that we could make a trip back to our former home state, you know, where all family is, you know, we could bankroll the trip with the savings of not just doing two Ironmans, you know, that pays Mm -hmm. for the hotel, that pays for the gas. And so, you know, because I mean, just the registration fee is only the first cost of an Ironman. Certainly, you know, you can add so much onto it. And really, if Mm -hmm. if it would have been between anything, it would have been between Michigan Titanium and Ironman Chattanooga being also relatively close. And we would have people there to see us. And that was the other thing that we wanted. We wanted to be able to have people out there cheering for us. And we had no idea how important that would be. But we still kind of realized that and wanted to not just the two of us go off to Arizona or something right. and, and go be there alone and have to fly the bikes and the whole thing yeah. right there. So it was a very, it was just perfect that it was there because it would have been a harder sell if it was, you know, the, the Indiana titanium in the middle of Fort Wayne. And, you know, I mean, like, yeah. <laughs> Jen's everybody hears faces puckering we, faces. Like, I know. Yeah, I, we get it. Yeah. Through Indiana yeah. on the way up there. But, um, there go our Indiana listeners. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah. I uh, know that you chose to live there. I mean, yeah. Yeah. come on. There must hey, be something. We, there's got to be something. There's got to be something. We, we both lived, lived there, there for four years. Four years so. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Anyway. There are right. nice parts of Indiana. There yeah. are. There really are. Mm-hmm. Evansville. We'll be running a half. I'll be running a half marathon at least there here uh, coming up. Yeah. Nice. I did a very nice Xterra in Indiana. Yeah. yeah. See? Now we got them back. Okay. Nope, they're back. There we go. Welcome back. Welcome back, Indiana. Redeemed. That's that's the uh that's the story behind Michigan Titanium and why that one specifically okay. uh and like I say, you could not ask for a better thing that it was the fit in the budget, where family was, and uh as I've mentioned I think before on the podcast, the bike course about half of the mileage on it, maybe three quarters even, was all roads I had ridden. On a mountain bike. On a mountain bike. bike. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) And so, and and roads that I had not ridden now in, you know, 15 years or so. So, I mean, it was memory lane. It was really good to be out there and just, you know, I knew that I would enjoy having that familiarity and and the chance to go back there and ride for the better part of a day. It's something Mm -hmm. that I, you know, if we go up in December, we're not going to do that, you know, Mm -hmm. so it's our chance to do it. And then, so going back a little bit. We know kind of your background on long, really stupid, long things that you've done, but let's put Jen on the spot again. Um, as in your background and all, have you trained for anything this stupid before? Have you got any of that in your backlog that you had something to play off of, or was this kind of all new? And I've done one marathon and a couple of seventy point threes, and that's about it. Okay, gotcha. distance wise. All right. And so was there any point at this where you had kind of like a, like you had any surprises, you had any aha moments or panic attacks or... Let's... <laughs> Does hiding in my sister-in-law's bedroom two days before count as... Yes, <laughs> very much. <laughs> That's part of the race. You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I remember hiding under the covers watching movies on my laptop in Placid. Like the night before the race, it was like four o'clock in the afternoon I had already, like, stressed completely over the stupid special needs bags. Mm. And that was done. And, like, my brain was just done. So I I was hiding in the bed. Everybody else was downstairs. I was hiding in the bedroom with the covers over my head. This is a great picture. I know. (laughs) And I think I was watching Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, if I remember correctly. (laughs) Like, the new one. The really bad one. (laughs) And it just, yeah, it was just, you got to do it. Yeah. Yeah. It's you've got to have that moment. But did so. you have any any surprises on the training, or was it kind of what you guys expected? I mean, obviously you had a great coach, so you know. Yeah. I had a good training partner too. That is true. That is yeah. true. Several of them. Yeah. Yes, you did. It takes a village. Iron Man training by yourself would be just awful. Tough. Very tough. Yeah. I so, mean, before before Chris and I started, look, Chris oh, Pearl, yeah, yeah, started, Riding and I together, linked up yeah. to do our long rides. Man, I mean, goes. That was just awful. Yeah. And then we had that aha moment of, hey, we're both 
we got the same coach. We're doing the same race. Yeah. We should probably ride, ride together. together. Brilliant. But yeah, it makes a huge difference. Yeah. So so what was, uh, what was your guys' um, favorite part of training? The biking was by far the best, I think, over the, the mm-hmm. past, just because it was over the summer. I love running, but running over the summer does not love me very much. And swimming's a stupid sport. <laughs> I say this with like three people who like swimming in our hey, no, at no, it. don't you loop me into that? Don't you put me <laughs> so, into that? So, so, so that two people who me. are doing a ten k in a few weeks, yeah, really, right, I, exactly. It, it may be stupid, but we love it. No. Surprises <laughs> though that I, <laughs> I can actually say that now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah officially. I, officially. I, I will say this though. I do love my bicycle more than swimming. Hmm. I like swimming's coming up though. Like it's it's coming up the list on the things yeah. I like to do. But even my choice, road bike, all day long. Mm. Yeah, I'm with you there. But yeah. swimming is also coming up my yeah. list. Yeah. Surprises. Right. I know I I didn't mention a surprise, but one of the ones I had mm-hmm. was the recovery between long bike and long run because I had done stuff like that before. You know, back to back for shorter races on like a Saturday and Sunday. And always it was a real struggle to run the day after a long ride and it never went well. I think it went well for me almost every truly long weekend. Mm -hmm. I tended to blow up in the middle of the weeks. I think there was maybe one weekend day that was really bad. But outside of that, like I remember the, the, when I reached the peak of Ironman training and did 112 on the bike on Saturday and then did like 17 and a half, running on Sunday and felt like I could have finished the marathon that day. Mm -hmm. You know, I think I already went like 15 minutes over, so I didn't want to keep pushing. Thank you. Yeah. Good (laughs) call. Thank you for stopping. Good call. Yes. But, but yeah, like I was surprised that that, you know, somehow that clicked. So that was a very pleasant. Hmm. Well, we know your least favorite part of training was swimming. Yes. Yes. What about you, Jen? What was your, what was the least favorite part about training? Surprisingly enough, my running. Oh, why is that? Being a runner. It's, I know. Yeah. That's very odd yeah. for me. But I think because it was so much solo running. Oh, okay. And I yeah. got used to being with Amanda a lot of times for biking or with Chris, and, and then I'd run by myself. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. That's my best guess, at least. Mm-hmm. All right. So you guys have kind of come through this process, both the training and the racing. Do you feel like any part of you has changed because of this? It may it may be too soon to tell, but do you think anything has changed either physically, emotionally? <laughs> like, are you are you scarred? You mean like uh, uh, or, temporarily or permanently? <laughs> <laughs> well, it could be a little bit of both, but even mentally, because I definitely changed you know? from two weeks ago. But whether yeah. or not, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But even even mentally, you know, there th- is there anything that you notice? I'm not nearly as freaked out to swim a 10k. There you go. In five mm-hmm. weeks, as I would have been at the beginning of the summer. Mm, that's true. Yeah, mm-hmm. I see that. What about physically? Like, because I know, I mean, we've talked about my post Iron Man experience, and and I I don't know if we've ever talked really about how Lana how you felt coming down off off of Louisville. Mm-hmm. No, I don't think but, we have. Yeah, but like, because I mean, and you know, you Jen, you've got your 10k swim coming up. You guys are both doing a really long, stupid bike ride, keeping my wife company this weekend. Like, I mean, how are you feeling going into that? How's, how's that, that recovery coming that. Yeah. Cause you guys are still like, as we record this podcast, you guys are about what? 12, 12 11 days, after, days 12 days after your Ironman. Mm-hmm. So. Well, I did a really stupid long swim on Sunday, my longest swim ever. So yeah. nice. Yeah. Of all the sports to do long after, after an Ironman, that's the one that's to go. That's really the yeah. one to do. Yeah. I've been enjoying the bike when I've been able to get out on it. My body is a mess of contradictions right now, which mm-hmm. is it's probably to be expected. Mm-hmm. Um, I was so pleased how it felt the few days after because I expected nothing but misery. And in reality, I was pretty okay. I had a, a little issue with my left VMO above my knee that made it hard to get up and down stairs. And so I would be, you know, right foot up, left foot down, you know, like shuffling one step at a time. So loading the car, we were on the second floor of the hotel, exterior entrance, of course. 
You know, so loading up the car to come back on Tuesday morning. Just throw it over the railing. I know. Yeah. <laughs> just bike, you know. Just, <laughs> just so drop that it. was a little bit interesting, but I got a very good, you know what, that actually might explain an injury I'm dealing with right now. I got a very good right glute workout from all of that stairs, and, and that's what's plagued me this week. I don't know what in the world it is, but I've I've misaligned something in my rear end, so. <laughs> huh. All right. It's uh. It's uh yeah. Chris's butt's jacked up. It's yeah. jacked up. All right. It is jacked up. So I'm all taped up now. It's feeling a little bit better. But yeah, I was I was very pleased, you know, mm-hmm. by Wednesday morning uh, I was doing stairs like no problem and um like, nah, dog, I got this. Right. You watch me yeah. walk I up. I think these the surprise stairs. is cuz like after you do a full marathon Mm-hmm. You wrecked. Oh, it hurts right. so much it more. Hurt. Yeah, and then the you do this great, thing and right. you're like, how did I just do that plus that marathon and how do I not feel oh, toast? It's, it's it's amazing the difference and I've not I've I have yet to hear somebody say that they didn't feel that big difference. You oh, know? totally. So. Yeah, and that's the only thing I could compare it to, really. Was, right, right. You know, how did I feel after a marathon? Wow, I was really, you know, hurting for a week. Yeah. And so I figured, how much worse is it going to be? And in reality, it was. At least you didn't make me sleep on the floor on a pile of blankets before this race. Oh, we're going to tell this story now. <laughs> oh, this is going to be good. So, so we bought this house okay. a couple weeks before my first marathon. And Chris decided that we should move into the house the week of the marathon Hmm. and that we should move everything except the large furniture the Friday before the marathon. So he just, so we had to improvise a bed for the following two days. And I slept on the floor on a pile of blankets and pillows the night before the marathon. Night before the marathon. Wow. Yeah. And he has yet to live that one down. I was going to say, I don't don't know. Pillow fort camp out before a marathon sounds like kind of cool. No. no. <laughs> well, she said her PR. The only marathon I've run. There you go. <laughs> PR day. PR day. By default. Oh, boy. I think we're just going to leave that one alone. Mm, you might want to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. So here's a, here's a good one. After you guys finished, right, you get your, get your, your day done, um, your appetite is totally jacked, and you everybody's mouth and stomach, everything is just... What was the first thing you felt like eating and you were just like, oh my God, this is awesome. Like, did you eat that night? Did you eat the next morning? Did you like order in a pizza or just go to Denny's? Like what, <laughs> how did, how did, how did the, the post race eating go? I had a bag of Doritos. Nice. And they were amazing. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of Doritos? Nacho Doritos. Just oh, okay. traditional. Traditional Doritos. Good. Yeah. Okay. Good yes. job. Salty, mm-hmm. nacho, mm-hmm. cheesy, crunchy. Yeah. Yeah. So I was strangely disappointed with the post-race eating thing because, (laughs) like many athletes, I love to eat. And I was kind of hoping, I don't know, I was kind of hoping for more of an experience of just eating everything in sight. Like, you know, this, and it, it was not. We spent way too long in the grocery store before the race picking out everything we could think of to eat. So... Night of the race, my my gut was not happy by the end of the marathon, and so mm-hmm. it was there was not much eating that happened for probably a couple hours. Yeah, uh, and by eleven thirty, we were uh, warming up breaded chicken tenders in the hotel, and <laughs> and it was really it. like two yeah. toddlers. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's like let's make like one and a half pieces and if you finish that we can have some more <laughs> two drunk toddlers i love it drunk toddlers. yes <laughs> i didn't say drunk but uh, that works yeah, too. definitely it, yeah and, and i did do my stereotypical got up in the middle of the night and demolished a bag of chips <laughs> i've done that after after every single like hundred plus mile bike well not every single 100 plus because i've done more of those now but anything that was epic my 134 mile bike ride um you know salty crunchy fatty exactly so you cannot get enough calories and so i was i did not sleep worth a darn the night after either i got probably three hours okay that's all right how was your sleep john i slept all night despite (sighs) him eating chips in the middle of the night wow she was not happy i remember falling asleep for about maybe five hours it yeah, hard, and I had like, like hard, and then mm-hmm. I woke up and I was like, I, you know, awake. And so but like, I, I woke up; it was like yeah. five in the morning, and I remember yeah. I was just like, I was hungry. And then I, my appetite hit me at about five, and I was like, so I'm like creeping around the hotel room, like, and there's bags of food everywhere, and it's just you know, it's like we came back that that mm-hmm. night at like eleven thirty, you know, and everything. Oh shit, it's just all over the place. So I like 
you know, used the bathroom, whatever. And I came back out and I'm like, man, and I'm digging through bags and I'm finding stuff. And I'm just like, nothing would satisfy. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like crawling through all this stuff. And he's like, he finally wakes up. He's like, ready for breakfast? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> what, what you couldn't Bring see right there was, was Lana, like the, the hand gestures <laughs> of like the sneaking around the hotel. And then like that the little, like great. the three finger, like T-Rex arms, oh, like yes. shoveling imagination. Yeah. And she got so happy oh. just thinking about that. You could just see. Well, that it was, that was fun. There were all these little, and we had stopped somewhere. We bought chocolates somewhere. And I knew those chocolates were in there and I love chocolate so I was when I found those I was like oh score yeah but I was eating all the little things yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I like I like in Placid when we just like killed <laughs> ben it in and Jerry's Ben and Jerry's it was like a pack of bacon a whole pack of eggs <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Two pints of Ben and Jerry, three pints of Ben and Jerry's, like oh, between can... three dudes. We owned that. So how's your sleep going? How are you guys sleeping now? Are you back to normal sleep yet? I I am still getting in every hour of sleep that I can. I'm well over nine hours a day, maybe eight at night, another okay. half hour during the day. Um, Again, we're only, getting, we're only 12 we're only days out. We're only less this than two not, weeks yeah, after. This is not weird. And, I mean... Michigan is a, our area in Michigan is about a nine and a half, 10 hour drive. We drove up in one day and drove back in two, thankfully. Smart. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, it's, we're talking, you know, probably with the uh, shuttling around up there, 1,500-ish miles total of driving, you know, of mm -hmm. which I'll do every single mile because I like to drive and I don't trust people at all. And I hate driving. And she hates driving. Okay. So, so that works. We, it works we have really been up well. to Michigan yeah. probably three dozen times now as a married couple of uh, almost nine, or just over, over nine, nine years. years. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I, I think she's driven one hour and a half segment when I had a splitting headache and couldn't keep my eyes open. So, so, so let's, let's, let's ask this because I know how this goes in the tingle car when we drive. Mm -hmm. Do you get co-pilot or do you get <laughs> Depends on how I feel at the time. Cuz like I and I love my wife dearly. And and no matter what she says when we start a trip that that's that ain't going to happen. She's like I'll keep you company. I probably no, no you won't. No you won't because the invariably like an hour into the trip and she's like head against the car. Yeah. It's, it's the it's the cutest thing ever. But but <laughs> She's like, there's no way she's going to be awake. We better not put this podcast out before we go camping this weekend. Uh, She'll so be like, hey, let's listen to the podcast. Okay. She'll be like, no, 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 no it's, it's not, not that good. That's really it's really not. not. Love you, good. honey. Yeah. Love you, dear. <laughs> yeah. Not, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, well, no, it's, I think, hey, sleep not being normal yet, I, that's not unexpected. Right. And it's not that far yeah, off and normal. No. But, you know, I, yeah. the first few days we were home, I didn't feel any more tired than I would be if we had just taken a trip up there and okay. not done Iron mm -hmm. Man. But I think I think it's gotten to me more over this week, and some of that I yeah. think is just also getting back into the flow of like a full work. Week. Normal. We came life. back oh, yeah. a two day work week, and so it was kind of oh, and now here's mm -hmm. our weekend again, and now it's more like oh no, you've got a lot of stuff to do. Yeah, a lot of stuff to do. Ready to take on that first Ironman, improve your next century ride time, or just build up from a sprint triathlon to your next bucket list event? Let LB Endurance Coaching be your guide on the journey. Head coach Lana Burrow brings her racing experience, coaching acumen, and education to craft a training experience that invigorates and challenges triathletes, cyclists, runners, and swimmers. LB Endurance offers one-on-one -on -one coaching, clinics, classes, training camps, and consultation. Certified, insured, and embracing the best of today's technology, Lana will turn you into a legit badass. Visit lbendurance.com to learn more and like LB Endurance on Facebook. So after the race, you finished the race, it's been 12 days. How are you feeling about where you're at right now? Like you've reached the pinnacle of what most people consider the pinnacle of endurance Main, mainstream, sports, triathlon. mainstream triathlon. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh -huh. You've done the longest distance there. Is it a letdown? Is it like, are, are you jonesing to do another one? Or are you like, nah, man, that sucked. And I'm going back to like slow and, or I'm going back to like short and fast. And... 
Or haven't decided yet. Or haven't decided yet. Or you're like... I'm swimming a 10K in five weeks. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Five? I think it's like three. Fair enough. It's coming up fast. Yeah. 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 I am also... I've planned out my fall. And I managed to get my fall planned out within a handful of days after the full. For that, I'm actually kind of proud of myself. Beyond the fall, I have no idea. See, neither one of them uh, signed up for the race the next day. That is for next year. Yeah, and and that honestly is partially an issue. And if I have to answer right now, I can't see living the rest of my life and not doing another one. Mm -hmm. I also have no desire to make it an annual thing. I do not have the time, patience, money, brain power. Physical, I mean, I might be able to make it work physically, maybe, but even that is a question. Right. So, yeah, definitely that's a reason that I wouldn't just be going right back and doing it. If I were to go back and, and do another full, I would consider doing it at the same spot, not just for the money, but it was a very well-run race. Good to know, um, yeah. It was very nice to um, have fewer athletes than you would see in a traditional Ironman. We had 82 that started the full with us. Mm-hmm. Uh, our whole wave was 82. They started everybody at once, which despite being a little bit less than some Ironman wave starts, was still more of the people that I'd ever swam with in a wave. So okay. it, it made me glad that I wasn't fast enough to stay up in the scrub of everything. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that was a benefit right there. I was a little bit worried, a two-loop bike course, I was a little bit worried that the second loop would get kind of lonely after the half, half athletes had um, you know done their thing. But it never... I was never out of sight of anybody for very long. Well, that's good. You know, it, it certainly thinned out that second time around. Mm-hmm. It was also a really, and I feel like I haven't really talked about the race at all. I've been focusing so much on the, you know, on the after. The the beginning of the bike loop was in a really thick fog for really probably the first Yeah, I saw that in the miles. pictures, yeah. yeah. And so riding it the second time when you could actually see more oh. than the sides of the road kind of felt like a different Yeah, different course, bike course. You know? So it was kind of interesting yeah, going through cool. that second time. Uh, I would much rather have that than have it be cloudy and foggy the second time around or whatever. But So for our listeners who aren't familiar with Michigan Titanium, it's a two-loop bike and a four-loop run. Or four out and back, yeah. Yeah, four, four out not and back. Not even a loop. <laughs> yeah, that's... four out and back. So you see everything eight times. Yes. How, how was that, Jen? That was special. <laughs> it actually wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Uh-huh. Um, there was a really fun volunteer out at the far turnaround point who got excited every time you came by, and it didn't matter how many times you'd come by. He was like, how many more you have left? All right, you're on this. Good job. Keep going. I'll see you next time around. Like, super enthusiastic about it. And then we get back to the start finish, and all of our family and friends and stuff were there. And so, and we'd see each other going past too until i caught back up to him i would echo that wasn't as bad as i feared because you know your opinion on repetitive things doesn't count i just need to say that right away there was one more there was a girl that was running not too far from us and she had a bunch of friends in the (laughs) middle of this this out and back there were no other spectators around anywhere. They right. It was a two-lane road that was basically closed to all but local traffic. Yeah. Okay. So, so there was really nobody nice. out. It was really like at the it. turnaround point that you saw everybody. Yeah. Like so, okay. so in the middle of all of this running, and every time we come by, they have different costumes on. Oh, oh fantastic. I love it. It was awesome. And I never did figure out half of what they were trying to do, <laughs> but they had different costumes on every time. So you never well, knew what they were going to be when you came past. So, so really, what was the best part of the race day, do you think? Beasting past all of the people in their wetsuits when I wasn't in one. Nice. Yeah, there dude. You go. See, swimmer. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. That was great uh, to, to see how well she did on the swim. No surprises there. And I knew, you know, the, the best part of the day for me was just watching the miles go by and, and realizing that progress was continuing to be made, you know, and really being able to chunk it up into small pieces. So our family and friends, we had 20 people out there, I think at one point on the bike course, uh, this worked actually very well for them. They were able to go to a park that was about 18 miles in from the start. And so there were no road closures. There was no nothing. And they could just set up by the road, 
do the picnic thing, sit there for five hours. It sounds like they were really into it. They like, were really, really into that's it. That's great. Yeah. And we, before the race, uh, about a month before the race or so, I went online and I found cowbells that we could put <laughs> our pictures and put nice. our info on. And so we got those and distributed them. And I think we gave away all but a handful, two or three that we've got left maybe now. But it was the best thing in the world because both of our families and most of our friends, for that matter, are much like us. We're not the world's most expressive people. And so if you would have told them, stand by the road, I mean, like, I guess we'll clap, you know, but they're just not going to be people that shout things or okay. or dress up in costumes or whatever. Like, that's just not. So we said, cowbells are a thing with cycling and triathlon. Here you go. Ring this and ring it for everybody that goes by. And they're like, really? Yeah, people will love it that if you ring for them. Heck and yeah. so they, you know, from our goddaughter who's eight and to uh, Jen's grandmothers, you know, that are in their 80s, they're out there by the side of the road. Cowbellin. Nice. Cowbellin. Loving it. Mm -hmm. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. That's awesome. And that was, and if I really had to pick a best part of the day, actually, honestly, that was it. Seeing that mile 18, 38, 76, and 94. Cowbells. With cowbells. the cowbells. And that's how I divided the bike was I'm going to get to the park, and then I'm going to go out and ride around and, you know, do the lollipop back, part of the course, come back, you know. And the, the, the most difficult part of the ride for me was between the second and third pass, which was the longest section before you came back without that going back to special needs and all that and come back out and then once i saw him the third time it's like well now i'm in the home stretch you know yeah, yeah. excellent so it really does help to you know you compartmentalize that day and I, I mean i know i've talked about that before but i mean it, it really is it's like you you go to the next landmark you go to the mm -hmm. i mean if you sit and you think about how far you have left to yeah. go when you start the day on a 140.6. <laughs> no, no, no way. Yeah. The way, like, the way I no broke way. my day out, I remember I was like, I'm going to go for a swim. Mm -hmm. And when I get done with that, I'm going to go for a, for a bike ride. And for the bike ride for me, I'm very visual, very, so I had it mapped in my head. So mm -hmm. it was like, I could see the map in my head as I was riding it. So that entertained me. And then again, it was like, now I'm going to go for a run. Mm -hmm. you know, so that's the way I, and it just worked like that was, yeah. and I knew things that I would look for on the run. So it was kind of like, oh yeah, we're going to go by Churchill Downs, you know? Oh, okay, cool. So that's, yeah. So you do kind yeah. of breaking it up like that definitely helps no you matter know, how you like, go about it. Yeah. yeah I mean, in, in, in Placid, you're like, okay, we're going out of town. We're Oops, going down jumps. the key. Oops, ski jumps. Yeah. Down the keen descent. Left on road. Yeah. I mean, it's just, mm. you go that, oh, climb the hill. Oh, get down the hill, climb the next hill. Oh, yep, climb the next hill. Okay, now we're back in town. Derek's and do it looking all into my near future. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yay. Yay. yay! But you're only doing half of it. Only so doing it once. Yeah, right. Yeah. So one, you're not doing the really yeah. dumb thing. Yeah, no. I'd like to go to the seventy point three up there. Yeah. I really would. Or actually, what I really just go take my bike and ride my bike for fun. We're gonna see what the temperatures are, yeah. and then you can decide. Yeah. 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 Last year they had a heating truck at the bottom of the Keen Descent, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. I'm we're we're already preparing the cold. You should just camp. wear your wetsuit the entire time. I thought about it. I mean, seriously, like, I'm like, that may not be the worst idea. Not the we'll worst idea. We'll see what the weather looks. Because actually, right now, they're calling for 60% chance of rain, highs in the low 60s. Yuck. So that's like wetsuit on bike yeah. weather. So we were <laughs> wetsuit legal for the race, despite my lovely wife not needing one and me very much. What was your temp? It was what? High, it was like mid-70s, right? 78. Like 70, so it was right at point the line. Point zero. Wow. Nice. The temperature the day before was 77.9 or something like that. I mean, it was literally... It had been 79 two days right before, before that. Before it, it was right on You the, know that race director's out there. Like, yeah, he's like there was, trying to find... Come on, 78. 77.9. Where are you? Where are you? Yeah. I believe I had heard it had been wetsuit legal every year, and most years it was like by that. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's what got good, though. me, though, mm -hmm. is... And this makes a little bit of sense, but the number of people wearing full sleeve wetsuits in the nearly eighty degree water. Well, they are faster. Mm -hmm. they, they are, are fa they are they faster. Are faster. They are faster. And I was I understand... still swimming faster than the people. Wearing full <clears throat> well, well <laughs> count. yeah, yeah, that that and happens ending, plenty. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, I was back yeah. there pointing at the shore. You know, yeah. ninety degree. <laughs> So I would I would sight every you know four to six strokes because you know pretty often and I'd be ten to twenty degrees off in that time I you know I don't know what it is and if I ever start swimming again I'll figure it out but um, there was one time I went like thirty seconds because I'm like I, I've got this figured out now I was ninety degrees 
out of where I should be, like literally a right angle from where I should be heading off, heading toward a kayaker who's like looking at me really confused. At least was the kayak the same color as the... Just a little bit of video. Oh, no, there was, yeah, no, there was no, it was just, it was just bad. I, I was thinking as I was finishing up that swim, you know, if I ever built up the endurance to go like across Lake Michigan or something, I would start out on the shore and end up back on the same shore. <laughs> I made it across. <laughs> Why does everything look the same? I know. <laughs> it only took like an hour, and I'm right back dry land the, again. The human boomerang. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Like <laughs> so that was not my favorite part of the day, uh, but I got through it. So you're prime candidate for like when they invent or when they perfect the goggles that have like the little like oh, yeah. sighting things in them. Right. It's, you should be day one. Like. Oh yeah. Or or uh, underwater headphones with like GPS guidance or something like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or I could just learn how to swim straight. There there is yeah, that. details. There is that yeah. Details. But, so so guys, now that you you're you're out on the other side of this, what advice would you give to somebody who is looking to do either a full distance or this race in particular? Is there any things that you learned that you would definitely pass on? Hmm. That's a good question. I don't know that I learned anything well enough in some ways, uh, even in what not to do examples. For this race in particular, we're going to start with yeah, that. Yeah, for that because that's, for this that's, race, that's a sure. pretty, that's a pretty uh, you know, specific thing. Um, it is hillier than it looks on the elevation maps and mm. hillier than I remember it as a, as a teenager. So it's not bad. But it's not but, bad. But it looks... We were riding around here trying to find courses with similar elevation gain for the distance. And it was like down here, it was, oh, it is so flat. And then we got up there and it's like, eh, not very flat. Not so flat. Yeah. So there rolling. Were, so really rolling. rolling you know, and there, okay. were, there were maybe three or four hills where you were down in your small chain ring, which okay. com- once again, compared to Tennessee, no big deal. But on a day that you're trying to take it really easy and save something, it's, it's, it's yeah. a little more noticeable. And yeah, it certainly wasn't flat, flat. Uh, same thing with the run. The run looks like you are running on a track on the elevation map. And in reality, you're always going up and down some small hills. Squeeze your heads in. Yeah, you yeah I know. Okay. Derek's doing we got, the mid-podcast Yeah, we got selfie. the mid-podcast <laughs> Instagram. <laughs> there we go. That'll be up on on the internet before this show is, probably. Yes. Um, throw that up on the What about gram. you, Jen? What, what kind of advice would you give someone off of, the, off of doing this? My first thought was really figure out your nutrition. Figure out what yes. you can eat, what you can't eat, and stick with it. Because mm-hmm. that was one of the biggest things I had to figure out was what I can and can't eat and keep with it. I think for both of you guys, mm-hmm. throughout through your whole training, it was definitely mm-hmm. a lot of trial and error. Or You'd have a ride at work, you'd go on the next ride, try the same thing, and it was like, nope, that doesn't work anymore. Nope. Try something else. Mm-hmm. I yeah. had very few issues with fueling during training there was one bad ride that i remember that was not Mm -hmm. great outside of that um what i was most concerned about rightly so was the run the bike i literally nailed my plan to the letter on that and it was no sweat to do that i probably could have even taken in a few more calories but had more than enough um was not an issue uh, drank enough. The only thing that was a little bit confusing was the logistics of which is going in what bottle when, because of uh, the placement of the aid stations and mm-hmm. you know what. It's, I, it's yeah, tricky to work that out. That became a little bit harder yeah. because I didn't quite know which would be empty when. Uh, but I did pretty well. I never really ran out of anything, and I only a couple times I would kind of down the last bit of my bottle to but make your, it empty, But your bike but nutrition that you had practiced in training worked for was the race perfect. day. Okay. Yeah, and how about you? No Mine was that. perfect, too. Okay, good. No problem good. with that. And how about on the run, then? Run was fine up until about halfway through. And then after that, it became a lot more trying to just get a little bit here and a little bit there. Yeah. And then by mile 18, uh, I think after mile 18, I probably had three or four swigs of uh, flat pepsi uh, maybe a few of the crackers i had with i pretty much had nothing they probably that. did they, did they do the chicken broth like iron man does they did not they did i not. think they i saw did. it once sitting on a table but they never had it out ah, gotcha. right okay but yeah it it just at that point i knew that i was moving slowly enough and did not feel bonked at all 
that mm. I would be f- most likely fine, or at least would have some forewarning if I started yeah. to, you know, feel. Sure. Yeah, so I wasn't going to push it. How was yours? How was your run nutrition? Mm. Yeah, it was mm-hmm. a struggle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, by the third lap, I was down to Pepsi and pretzels if I could force it down. Okay. And I just forced it down. So get something in there. Yeah. 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 So did you guys both use on course nutrition or did you take your own stuff? I took stuff for the run for preparation to not have to take anything but water, really, and ended up um yeah i didn't really I never took any food from aid stations, I don't think mostly because of the gluten allergy issue mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. rules out the cookies and pretzels right. and whatever else the vast majority of everything I, I think I might have yeah. had a piece of banana or orange at some point, maybe, but there wasn't a whole lot. And I wasn't going to be doing anything really in the way of goo at that point. Because mm. if it's not, you know, if what I had with me was too sweet and too, oof, you well, know. Well, at that point, you don't want it. Right. It wasn't yeah, now. Yeah. It wasn't going to happen. It's just the least appetizing so thing. So I yeah. mostly used it for water and ice. Okay. So, <clears throat> okay. So I've been running all summer with the ice hat. It looks as stupid as you can imagine. It really does. There's a picture, a picture of me. Yeah, there's a picture of me. I mean, it's just like the That's biggest That's the one you're posting thing. on the podcast, by Oh, the way. We, can, we can post that. I had no fewer than a dozen people comment on it because every aid station volunteer would try to figure out why I was getting ice, but then I wasn't putting it in my drink or anything like that mm-hmm. and just pouring it in my hat. It's just a very simple hat with a little compartment on the top and a drawstring. Just pull it up. It takes two cups of ice, and it'll last for about 30 minutes. We were lucky for it not to be, you know, a heat index in the 90s. It had been like that up there until right, recently, yeah. and we got the perfect day outside of a little bit of the fog. Um, 81, 82, not humid. Uh, the run for, st- for August, that's a win. For yeah. August, yes. it was perfect, but it still got hot. I questioned on the bike, do I even want to run with the hat today? Because <laughs> it's not really that warm. In fact, I was a little chilly on the bike at times, and I'm very glad that I, I did. Yeah. Uh, and I ran with it most of the marathon. I ditched it on the fourth lap. They let us, because you pass special needs each lap, they would let you in it whenever, which was oh, that's unexpected nice. and that's, very That's the nice. benefit of a small race. Right. Yeah, right. for sure. Because I figured that I only could do it once halfway. Correct. And so once I realized, oh, well, I, you know, I took that opportunity to... Props to them for that. That's, yeah, that's, that's awesome. nice. But yeah, so by the end of the race each volunteer at the aid stations was pretty aware of oh you need two cups of ice don't you for your hat and whoever look at people look, look at this hat this I've is trained the best hat volunteers. Ever. I need one of these. yeah i mean literally they all had they knew what and, and then if i passed it up and i had enough ice do you need your ice for your hat no it's good i'll be back I in a minute it. And yeah it was great and what, it was very nice that day. what did you resort to eating john Pretzels and Pepsi and pretzels oranges and, and oranges was the yeah. oranges was yeah. my, my saving grace for the oranges <clears throat> mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So we've kind of already touched on on this, but we know what's next for you. Jen's doing a really dumb swim. You're both doing a really dumb bike ride with my wife this weekend. But what's next after that for you, Jen? After your dumb long swim, what are you? Are you... I don't really have anything scheduled per se. Um, my goal next year is to be able to do triathlon, probably sprint distance with Ansley's Angels. Oh, cool. So I and will... what is that? For those people listening at home, what is... Okay, so Ansley's Angels is a national organization that pairs up people with disabilities, special needs, medical conditions who otherwise can't do endurance events and pairs them with an able-bodied athlete who pushes, pulls, whatever, to get them across the finish line. So my goal is to be able to pull somebody during my swim, put them on their chair behind my bike and then push them for my run nice nice i see a lot of uh pulling pull buoying paddles in your future yeah. <laughs> yeah you know what else is a lot of pull buoy and paddles swim, swim, swim run. run yes swim run derek has glimpsed his his training plan coming up yes, yes. yeah Lots yeah of... there's gonna be a lot of that by the way the kick drills last night oh mm. uh, i was not liking you Everybody. not at all i've not met one athlete yet who loves kick drill uh, I don't mind to do them. They're just so bleeding boring. Mm-hmm. And I was hungry. And so all I was doing is staring at the ceiling, just being hungry. And that made me so angry. All right, so next time, pull your fins on, do dolphin kick on your back. Okay. 
All right. Dolphin kick on the back. Use your fins. Okay. And if you really want to challenge, pull those fins off. Yeah. Yeah. Then you'll really hate me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All this talk about swimming makes me think, wow, I hate swimming. <laughs> <laughs> Just the idea of even kicking right now, like, no. <laughs> All of no, you. I'm good, dog. No. Nope. Had enough. So, that. so Chris, we know you mentioned um, Indiana for half marathon. Yes. What else you got going on? Uh, so I, I've got Indiana for the half, and then I'm going to be doing uh, the Chickamauga Battlefield Marathon in November uh, down by Chattanooga. So Excellent. Uh, we'll see where that all goes. But I'm kind of planning to focus on the bike for the next few weeks while the weather's mm-hmm. nice and then shift it hard into running. Um, and then uh, next year we'll probably do the Pistol 50K again because I owe that race one. It, the uh-huh. wheels fell off mm-hmm. last year. Yeah, um, that, yeah. You know, my my marathon PR, of course, maybe by then will be even better. But uh, my marathon PR can't be like two and a half hours better than my 50k PR. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's that, something... not a flat course. Yeah. It's not a trail 50k or even anything like that. Like it was a flat paved yeah, 50k. Yeah. No, that's got to come down. That's got to come down. Yeah. That's Beyond fun. that, I have no idea. That's okay. What's the one thing, piece of gear? piece of whatever that you either had or didn't have Mm -hmm. on your race Mm. that you want to tell everyone else that might do something long and stupid that they need to have i'll put you both on the spot or need to not have or just the one top tip team gerard top tip i see the wheels turning over there I put tie dye duct tape on all my bags, and I was yeah, yeah. high five yeah. with the tie dye. It was awesome. <laughs> you knew exactly where them bitches were, didn't you? I totally. Hell yeah, it was you awesome. did. And those bags right there. Yes. I, the volunteers couldn't find them, but I could. By God, love it. I got all my bags handed to me because I shouted my number before I got there, and they, oh, they well. had them out. But uh, I did that too. I still found them first. Yeah, oh, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so. Another story as far as bringing stuff. I, if if and when I do it again, will not bring as much stuff because Thank I have you. the over, mm-hmm. the over, you know, preparedness mm-hmm. and there was a lot of stuff I did not use. And I'm glad that I had it. But the epitome of this was on the first lap of my run before I knew that I could get into special needs whenever I wanted. Because special needs was like a mile in. Please I mean, tell I me could... it's a backpack full of water bottles. <laughs> it's almost that bad. Um, so I had, my, my way of explanation, I had uh, decided, I had taken a change of running clothes. You know, I was thinking about using the changing tent, getting out of the, the you know, the, the, Nasty. Which sounded kit. great in your race plan, by the way. You I was like, what? this it's... is good, legit. I like, like whatever, this. Whatever, it'll take dry a couple clothes. minutes, dry clothes, not a big deal. A couple you minutes, know. totally worth it. Thought, thought it would, and then I got back and it was not a hot day. I felt comfortable in the kit still, and so I'm like, you know, I'm just going to I'm just gonna go for it. I, I'll, I'll be fine. I didn't feel like I needed to get out of it or anything like that. Plus, I had the added benefit of uh, my running clothes have no pockets in them, and the 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 tri kit has a nice big pocket in the back to shove stuff back in there. And I also had like a running race belt that I had nutrition in and I had salt and I mean, like Batman's utility belt, (laughs) (laughs) like a little, a little much. Um, The problem was I didn't realize or didn't really think through like getting stuff out of my tri kit um, back Mm -hmm. Jersey pocket. Uh, And so my, race belt was like trying to bounce stuff out of that and it was maladjusted so i had to stop and deal with it in the first mile and i ended up having like (laughs) it's just embarrassing even to think about like sunscreen and something else (laughs) in my a small bottle but still in my tri kit the running belt (laughs) shoved full of crap a water bottle in my hand something in my other hand my hat on my head, and like I had like two things in my hands. Actually, I, I had like a sweat. I, I had like eighteen things I was carrying. Please tell me there are pictures. No, not of God. that. There are no pictures uh, of that. But I had so much stuff. And by I the way, by the way, I'm just going to tell out. you guys because I I read Chris's pre-race plan. None of this was in it. Yeah, I just you had that pre-race panic. Like, oh my God, I need all this stuff. Well. <laughs> 
Mostly I just didn't want to type out stuff forever because it was stuff I was going to take anyway. <clears throat> anyway. <sighs> but yeah, I had my hands full in a very literal sense, and uh, I what? eventually... Remember well, that. There's your right. Might need my <laughs> might need my compass. Might need my water bottle. Oh, canteen. Got flares. Flares. <laughs> Just in case I get lost. All right. So <laughs> might need a fire starter and some wood. And we can't need to camp out on the side of the road. You never know. All I'm picturing is the kid from Up. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So Sorry, we we man. can't <laughs> we can't miss this recap of the day though because you know of the race. So so she starts ahead of me in the water, you know, mm-hmm. had probably at least 10, 12 minutes on me going onto the bike. Took forever to catch her because she's become such a good cyclist. Yes, she has. I uh-huh. remember six yep. years ago and doing, you know, we would do 15 on a slight downhill and then there'd be a slight uphill that I didn't even notice that she was half a mile hour, half a mile back doing 12. And now <laughs> she's doing, you know, she did two centuries in a row and yeah. Crushing her bike. Absolutely. Yes. Mm-hmm. So. I tried to catch up to her at Bike Special Needs, and she was leaving as I was coming in. And then I tried to catch up to her at the next rest stop about 10 miles up, but I had to pee, and she didn't. So she kept on going. Finally caught up with her at mile 90. and uh, 84. And 84. Give you okay. For that. 84. And, you know, rode together in a non drafting fashion, you know, trading spots basically, you know, until a little after mile 90, I think, and then I, I pulled away. And stayed ahead until just before the second turnaround on the run. So about eight, nine miles in. And I was having a time by then. Uh, Mm -hmm. Nothing ever clicked for me during the race. It was never horrible. But I never had that extra little bit that I usually get when racing or would even have had. I felt so much stronger three weeks prior three or four weeks previous mm. hitting all those high distances yeah uh i mean it's apples to oranges but i feel like if i could have gone out and raced those days i would have just crushed it and now we know exactly how to peak and taper exactly you. Yeah. you know it's a, it's, a, mm-hmm. yeah. it's a science that you have to learn as you go yeah along. this I, I wish there were there were better ways to test things out ahead of time it's like when you talk about the nutrition kind of falling apart on the run mm-hmm. there's almost no way to test that without actually, actually doing it. And, yeah, yep. and, and in training, you wouldn't go 112 and then, you know, run a marathon just to see what happens. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah you well, I don't know. Some people. Some people might, might but, but yeah, you might as well save that for race day. Well, which we did. and, that, and yeah. that leads into the run-up of it, too. My taper was something of nightmares. I mean, it just, you know, my body fell apart. My mind fell apart. Everything fell apart all at once. Mm-hmm. And then I'm getting this weird condition where I'm like, you know, spacing out and feel like I'm 10 feet above myself, behind myself. And so here's my run up. Here's my race prep. My race prep is Monday to finally break down and email frequent guest Kevin Sprouse and say, is this normal taper or is this something to worry about? And he said, this is not normal Normal. sounding. He said, get yourself some blood work like in the next hour. So I went and got poked and then seeing him the next day. And he's like, oh, it all looks pretty decent. He said, stop taking so much stinking vitamin D. You're toxic. I'm like, oh, gosh, thank you. And he said, if you weren't doing Iron Man, I'd tell you, you need to take a few weeks off. You've burnt yourself out. But he says, since you're doing more than your heart's ever been asked to do before, he's like, my friend here at the hospital can get you in for a stress test tomorrow morning. I'm like, I paid him. For the advice, so now I got to go yeah. do it. My 15 minute run that cost more than an Iron Man. Um, but yeah, that was my Wednesday morning going yeah. in, fasting, you know, no, no coffee, no food, as they wrote on my note, to going down to a hospital, getting a wristband, which I'm going to tack up with my Iron Man bib, the hospital <laughs> yeah. wristband from the day, you know, on the treadmill. Long story short is that I, I, I managed to max out the test, which was nice, if nothing else, and my heart's in great shape. And I was You're just ready like, to do an Iron Man. Very oh, much good. ready to do an Iron Man and very tired. So anyway, that's by way of explanation. Nothing really clicked that day. But I I have never been more happy to just be doing a race. Mm -hmm. That's the mental side of it that really surprised me and was good because I I didn't really pay attention to to pace. I went by feel. I -hmm. knew whenever it felt good that I was going to back it down just a little bit more. And the other adaptation that I would recommend, this would be advice that I would give to anybody too doing an Ironman or anything long distance, is you will feel bad. At some point, 
probably had a lot of points, honestly. Um, and, and my thing, the first time it happened, and every time after that, was to give it 10 minutes on the clock and say, I know it feels bad now. I'm going to check back, see what it's doing in 10 minutes. And almost every time it was like, that's either gone or something reduced, new showed up or something new <laughs> showed up maybe. But other, it kept me from, I got super nauseous a mile and a half into the swim. Never had an issue with nausea during the swim before, but I thought I was going to lose my breakfast in the middle of the swim at the beginning of the race. Like goodness knows. And I was starting to panic and it was like, well, I'm already out here. So I'm just going to like, look, and then uh, 10 minutes later it was gone. No big deal. It just was one of those things. So that's how I got through the entire day. And, you know, it was just nice to have that finish goal in mind where I wasn't frustrated by, right. you know, little individual things. It was just, it was a finish goal. Um, and so she catches back up to me on the run. And we had this moment where it's like, I think we're just going to be together at this point. You know, like, and that's what we did for the last, what, 18 miles or so? Mm -hmm. And it was, I can't think of a better way to do the race that we both foolishly decided to do our first one together on the same day, you know, and all of that. But to finish that out together, and it was so nice to have somebody to run with, because honestly, I'm not the person that would just go make a running buddy. You know, during a race, I would have run by myself and miserable mm, for the mm. rest of the way. And I'm totally the opposite because I she don't makes make a friend every race. Of course, every race. Yeah. This is oh, so yeah. Yeah. I always find a buddy out there. Yeah. yeah, and I don't know what's wrong with me, but uh, <laughs> it's really antisocial. And says the host of a podcast. I know right. it's a different it's a different thing, isn't it? And I'm the one who otherwise wouldn't. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. But just to have each other to kind of have that. Mm -hmm. Because when you're set up on that four loop course, you know, the repetitiveness was not the issue. Um, you know, in fact, it was nice to have the familiarity of this is here, this is there, there's the aid stations. It would made it very nice. Easy to check progress. Right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, there was the lovely hose guy that stood out there and sprayed us with a hose. Anyone who wanted yeah. it could get sprayed with a hose. Three out of the first four laps was when you needed it most. Um, here's the downside of a four out and back, not even loop, four out and back uh, race. All the mile markers are out there from the beginning. Oh, yeah. Uh huh. And so you can be running, you know, three miles in. You'll see mile 21. Mm. And that's a bad reminder to be getting until you're at the end. And then it's, oh, okay, well, this mile eight doesn't apply to me anymore, you know. But my biggest freakouts on the run were coming really late in the game because there's 18 down, eight to go. Like, oh, goodness that's a tough. That's a tough place a in tough a place standalone to be marathon. In. And the third yeah. lap was mm -hmm. torture, I think, for both of us. We walked more on that lap, and our families were getting concerned because our time had dropped precipitously. But the fourth lap, we brought it back together. And, yeah. and you know, certainly not as fast as the first two, but there was a lot more running involved. I'll say this because we were tracking you. We, we used the, the app that they had, which is basically another version of the iron man tracker right. so it was fantastic but i i was when i saw that because i saw you guys both drop off at that point it kind of for me it didn't surprise me because that's my same place is it doesn't mm -hmm. matter how long the race is it could be a 5k or a marathon that that third portion of four the 50 to 75 right. percent uh -huh. is the worst it could be an 800 repeat and that 200 of the <laughs> 800 is just that it could be a 100 all out in the pool Mm -hmm. And coming back 50 to 75. It's always the hardest, worst. Hardest. And it's like, it, it, no question, doesn't matter what it is in. And I, I don't understand that. I now, I now recognize it and expect it. So when I saw it with you guys, I was like, all right. Sounds they're on, about right. They're on loop three. Okay. Yep. They'll well, get through we're it. We're still making progress. They're going to finish. You know, like, yeah, it's they're, still, they're gonna do still it. moving. We're not paused anywhere for a long time. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it was nice to be counting down the last. We were just beating the sunset. And so that was perfect. Yeah, you guys finishing like before. Just, just literally that was cool. rated that. Did you guys get cold at the end? No. Either one of you? That's not cool. at all. That's not good. even after the facts. Nice. Uh, it nice. was perfect weather as far as that was concerned. Mm -hmm. But yeah, just that last little bit, we had the, she had the great idea to ditch all of our stuff at special needs because it was a mile from the finish. So oh, that's, yeah, that's then we great. didn't have to have the finish line picture with me carrying enough stuff to be a boy scout, you know, <laughs> like, so my that would have been pretty good. Though. It would have been a pretty good. Picture. I love my finish line pictures from Louisville. Cause I had, I had the running vest on, <clears throat> but I got cold. So I had my cycling vest pulled on over the top of this <laughs> running vest. So if you look kind of closely at it, it's like, 
There's something strange about her torso. <laughs> <laughs> and it's because I have this vest with the tube and I didn't have much stuff with me. Basically, I had just the some nutrition in the in the water, but yeah, I had pulled that vest on over cuz I was I got cold and with that a course like that, it was like you had special needs once at 13 miles and Louisville special needs is like 2 feet from the finish line. And there's no going back to it with Iron right. Man, you visit once and you're out. So yeah. You know, I've decided I'm going to keep my vest for loop two, but I had stuffed that vest in there. So I, I pulled that out, pulled it over my water vest, zipped it up, my wind vest. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I looked awful silly, but I didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> I was warm and I had my water. So I was more concerned with, I just didn't want to hold on to all my stuff after I finished. Oh, There's sure. No. Oh, yeah. It around. yeah. Mm-hmm. I love it. Actually, when, uh, when you guys did Lake Placid, that's what Chris Burl did. He because you guys passed by the special needs bag like mm-hmm. two miles from the end. Yep. He stopped and stuffed his vest in there, his water vest, and yeah, yeah, and just carried on. So he had his finish line picture without the vest. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. I opted no vest. I just went hand bottle. <laughs> yeah. And it it worked. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. Well, guys, I'm Good proud talk, of both guys. of you. Yes, and congratulations. Oh, uh, thank you. Congratulations on the finish. We have the medal here. It's a pretty. Pretty nice, yeah, nice metal. Yeah, it's it's heavy duty, hardcore, very nice. Bigger than an Iron Man medal, I got to oh, say. Really? Wow. Yeah, there yeah, it is. Actually, it reminds me of you ever do Kiowa Island Marathon. Their medals are really nice. Yeah. Really nice medals. The medal for the try this year, they just threw up there the picture the, like a week or so ago. Oh, yeah. And it looks awesome. It's yeah. like a hammerhead shark. Yeah, it's, yeah they're it's, always, they're, they're, they remind me a lot of like, well, when Rev 3 medals are like that too. Yeah. yeah. It's just nice, so. Congratulations, guys. Awesome. Wear, wear that with pride. Absolutely. Well, that's about all the talking I can do about myself for a while, so we'll go ahead and end it there tonight. Thanks to everyone for listening and indulging our own personal story here tonight. We'll have some uh, podcasts coming up in the feed for you shortly. You can subscribe so you don't miss a show on Apple Podcasts, the TuneIn Radio app, Stitcher, Google Play, uh, you name it. It's in many different places, including the website, losttransition.com. Follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Our Instagram handle, at Lost Transitions. Same on Twitter. On uh, Facebook, search for Lost in Transition Triathlon Podcast. You can hook up with us there. We'll talk to you again soon. And until next time, we hope all your transitions are smooth.